Hi there and welcome, I'm Nikki Sutton. Thank you for joining me today. Cutting negative cords of attachment. Various ways we can do this and what it's all about. Now, first of all, I have a tool for you to cut cords of attachment and it's a guided meditation for cutting the cords and the link is in the description and please go ahead and subscribe to that channel as well. It's called Guided Meditations with Nikki Sutton. So that guided meditation is a proactive tool that you can use to cut cords of attachment. And that's the easiest way to do it. It can be performed more than once. And using gentle hypnosis, that's bringing your subconscious mind to the surface so that it's really accessible and dominant. We look for the cords of attachment and go about severing them. Using hypnosis and visualization, we can actually see the cords and cut them as well and completely eliminate them. And this sends a message to the subconscious mind that we are doing healing now, that we are separating from this other person that we have cords of attachment with. So do listen to the rest of this video first and then go ahead and perform the cutting the cords guided meditation that I've made especially for you. So there is another way to cut cords of attachment, but first of all, I'll just explain what they are real quick and how they come about. And I'm doing this video because I had a question from a viewer. Thank you very much for your question. It's from NF. Good afternoon. I would be wondering whether you could be making a video on how to cut negative cords. Thank you very much. All your wonderful work is deeply appreciated. Ah, oh, thank you too. Now, cords of attachment are energetic cords, often silvery or white in nature, that attach us and someone else energetically. And these cords serve to sort of bind us to that person. And we end up thinking about them often and they end up affecting us emotionally. Once we sever the cord of attachment that attaches us to the other person, we find ourselves not so emotionally affected by them, not so triggered by their actions and their words. It's like energy and information flows through and down these cords of attachment so that when they say or do something, because we are attached to what they're saying and doing, we end up feeling emotionally affected or triggered and often it's negative emotions. So the cords of attachment could attach us heart to heart or we could be connected by the head. There can be more than one cord connecting us from various points on the body to the other person. And the guided meditation I created helps you to remove all of them, by the way. So how do they come about? Well, when we spend time with someone and we have an emotional connection or attachment to someone, i.e. they have fulfilled some sort of need in our life in the past, for example, a mother. Our mother fulfilled lots of needs for us. Some mothers better than others, of course. As children, we're vulnerable and we need caregivers to care for us because we can't care for ourselves. And if those relationships have had negative aspects to them, which have caused us to feel negative emotion, negatively about ourselves, negatively about them, negatively about the world and how we function in it and our role in the world, if our relationship with them has resulted in negative beliefs and negative perceptions and lack of self-confidence, self-love, self-worth and even guilt and feeling shameful, bringing up anxiety and so on, then that can really affect who we are today. So even if we don't see that person anymore, just by the fact we still think about them and even get triggered by the things they used to say, can show that we have cords of attachment with them. So we were attached to them in some way, even dependent, codependent on them. They affected us. They were part of our reality. And today, we just can't quite let them go. They still affect us in some way. I'll just give you a couple of quick examples before I give you another method to cut cords of attachment. So let's say one of my parents, when I was a child, I would, of course, look to them for validation as to how well I'm doing. We look to our parents for recognition and validation that we're doing well. 
For example, if we were to bake a cake, we would hope or expect that our parent or caregiver would acknowledge what we've done and perhaps say well done or at least smile. But let's say my parent was particularly difficult to please and was just very critical all the time. So I'd spend my time trying to do the right thing and to please them, which would rarely happen because instead I'd receive criticism. But I would be attached to that parent because I spent many years with them. They generally cared for me and all I wanted was validation, care and acknowledgement. So today when I visit that parent, when they're critical of me still as an adult, I have all kinds of negative emotions coming up. It triggers the same wound that was created in earlier years, still hasn't healed and causes me negative emotion today. But if I was to cut the emotional cords, I'd be better able to be in their presence without feeling triggered when they were critical or not acknowledging my achievements or even my existence. (laughs) In addition, when I'm away from them, I could start to build my own confidence and be able to validate and give myself a pat on the back when I did well at something, rather than feeling useless at everything and that everything is futile. I can start to build my confidence, build my self-esteem and increase motivation for the things I do because I don't need their validation and I really realise that now. So cutting the cause of attachment not only helps us heal to reduce negative emotion and triggering due to that person, but it also helps us to start to really perform self-improvement, find more self-love and happiness in our life. One more quick example. Let's say we were in a relationship that ended, but we still think about them and we still miss them. Now, we miss someone usually because they filled some sort of emotional need for us or even physical need. And now that need is not being fulfilled, we miss that person. So let's say subconsciously we miss the love they gave us and now we're feeling unloved and our subconscious mind knows that that's where love came from from that person we used to be in a relationship with so therefore we miss them that's one reason anyway but what if that relationship had severely negative aspects to it what if that person was quite manipulative and would turn everything round as if it was our fault and was always just having a go at us all the time but We want to get over them now we're not with them. We don't want to think about them anymore. We want to stop missing them because we know the relationship was not a good one. Why would we still miss someone if we knew the relationship was no good for us? Because they were fulfilling needs in one way, but in other ways the relationship was destructive. But because we miss them and we still are triggered emotionally by them in some way, it often means that we have cords of attachment with them still energetic cords that connect us energetically through creation because our reality is energy and information and no matter the distance between us and that person we can still have energetic cords of attachment through our energetic reality. Okay so as well as the guided meditation hypnosis link in the description another way to cut cords of attachment is to try to let go of that person through inner work Now it's easiest to do the guided meditation because this directly sends a message to the subconscious mind that we are letting go now. Hypnosis is a great way to get messages into the subconscious mind, for example of letting go of someone. So I find that a great way to let go of someone is through understanding. So take the example of the parent again that didn't show validation for achievements and was overly critical. My subconscious mind still can't make sense of that situation. Is it really true that I'm useless and can't do anything right? I feel like that is the case. But in actuality, that was drummed into me due to my parent and their shortcomings, the way they treated me, which wasn't appropriate. So first of all, it's key to realise that I am not what someone else tells me. Even if they don't directly tell me, I'm useless or no good, just through their actions they are telling me that. So realising that no one else is qualified really to tell me who I am. Next is where the understanding comes in. Why would someone else cause me to feel a certain way about myself, therefore causing me to have cords of attachment to them because I had some sort of a relationship with them 
They meant something to me, and yet they make me feel negative, hence the cords of attachment. Why would that person be that way? Well, through understanding, we can see that, for example, that was the personality of my parent. They are highly critical of others, especially me, because perhaps their parents were highly critical of them, and they're just passing on the same behaviour. Or they feel inadequate themselves inside and deep down. Therefore, to normalise that feeling, they are passing it on to me. And to compensate for that lacking in their ego and their sense of self, they project it onto others because it's actually something that needs healing within themselves. So through that understanding, we can see that they need healing and that it wasn't actually anything wrong with me. It's like someone who is unbalanced within the mind in a certain way, telling me that there's something wrong with me. They're not qualified to tell me who I am. So through certain realizations like that, the energetic cords of attachment tend to fizzle away on their own and you notice that you start to let go of them and feel better. So for example, next time I was in the presence of the parent who was being critical of me, even if I was doing well in life, I don't feel so triggered by it or irritated, unloved, annoyed or anything like that because I understand that that person is coming from a place of pain. They require healing and that's why they're saying it, not because there's anything wrong with me. Same with the relationship example. I need to get over missing them because they feel some sort of need for me. I miss the love they gave me. But the relationship was destructive and I can have understanding for some of their behaviours and even some of mine because they needed healing too and possibly I do. And reassuring the self, reassuring your subconscious mind that whatever need they fulfilled for you, you can actually either find somewhere else or have it met yourself. So if you miss the love they gave you because perhaps you were dependent on it, then increasing your own self-love may well help instead of outsourcing love. So can you meet the need that they fulfilled yourself? So various methods of inner work to help you let go of someone through realizations can actually naturally dissolve the cords of attachment without performing the hypnosis. But as I said, the hypnosis guided meditation is a quicker, easier way. So please leave a comment if you're willing to share about it, of course, what kinds of cords of attachment you've had and if you've managed to cut those cords or not. It'll be useful for others to hear as well. And thank you, NF, for inspiring this video. And please consider supporting this channel either through the YouTube join button, which is beneath each of my videos, or via Patreon, link in the description, to receive extra perks from me as well. And remember to click subscribe and the bell button too for notifications, because we're raising the mass vibration together. Thanks for listening. Much love.